Hey there, in this video I wanted to give you an inside look at what we typically do when we take your 3D designs in Tinkercad or some other application and prepare them to be 3D printed. Now this is a good video to watch if you have just started 3D modeling um, and are excited about getting your 3D models printed on a 3D printer. And the reason why is because there is uh, a lot going on between those two steps that you should be aware of uh, as you are designing because sometimes it's really important to be thinking about that as you're designing um, so that you can tweak your designs a little bit to make it easier to 3D print. Uh, one big mistake a lot of 3D modelers make when they first get started is to just create something and just think magically the printer is going to be able to print it uh, just as they designed it. And uh, that's not always the case because there are some limitations on the 3D printer. And we just want to review those a little bit in uh, this video. So what I have prepared for you here is, uh, and you can see it on my screen, is an application called Ultimaker Cura. Now this is not the only application uh, that you can use, but this is a really important application which is known as a slicer. A slicer. And basically the concept of slicing is taking a 3D model and slicing it into layers. Now why do we do that? Well if you think about the way a 3D printer works, it's going to print your object one layer at a time. Right? It's going to print the first layer, then it's going to move, it's going to print the next layer, then it's going to move, it's going to print the next layer, and then it's going to keep printing your design in layers. It doesn't go up and down, up and down, up and down. It just does it layer by layer by layer by layer by layer by layer. So in order to do that, the 3D printer is actually not very smart. It basically just follows some instructions that are provided it on how to 3D print your model. The problem is when you create your model, it doesn't contain those instructions on how to print it. All it contains is the geometry that's necessary to recreate it on screen. Uh, in order to get the printer to print it, there needs to be something that interprets the shape, that takes your 3D model and slices it into layers and then communicates to the 3D printer how to do that. The problem is all 3D printers are not created the same. They all are operating a little bit differently. So the application that slices it has to be aware of the printer you're going to use so that it knows how to instruct it appropriately. All right, so this is an application called Cura, Ultimaker Cura. It's provided by Ultimaker, which is a brand of 3D printers. You don't have to have that type of printer to use Ultimaker Cura, um, and they provide it for free. So it makes a really good utility. There's other ones out there. One's called Slicer. You've got paid ones. Call, uh, one is called Simplify 3D. I've used all three of these. They're all really good in their respects. I particularly uh, care for Cura because it's free and it has produced some really uh, good prints for me uh, with the printer that I have. So I just kind of stick with it. All right. So we're not going to get an overview of every particular thing that the slicer does, but I want to just kind of show you here, get a good look under the hood so you can kind of see what's going on when we take an object and prepare it for print. All right, so let's go ahead and open up a design that I have here. I have this little design here called a pointed hammerhead. And the, the idea here is that I am going to have this little hammerhead. There's going to be a handle that goes through the middle and is pointed on the other sides, right? Now, one of the things that any slicer will do is to help you position it on your bed. So I've got this uh, set to the settings of my particular printer, and this is uh, in kind of a virtual image of the bed. And what I can do is I can choose the position of the bed. Again, any application is going to allow you to do this. I'm not here to instruct you on how Cura works. I just want you to get an idea of how we do this. Uh, certain areas of your printer bed may be better than others. Um, if you talk with anybody that's worked with a 3D printer, one of the struggles that we have is making sure that the bed is as level as possible. And that may sound easy because it looks flat, but it's actually fairly tricky sometimes. 
and unfortunately not every area of the bed is the same level. And that's going to be a problem when you're print, trying to print something. You want everything to be at the same level, right? You want it to be consistent. Unfortunately, in the real world, it's not that way. Uh, so we kind of have areas of the bed that sometimes are better than others. In my particular case, I like the front left area of the bed the best. Uh, the middle, I try to avoid because it kind of uh, goes down a little bit. Um, and we're talking like minuscule amounts, but it can play a role when you're trying to 3D print your design. So I can position it, I can rotate it and things of the nature, you'll, you'll see that a little bit later. Um, but one of the main things you do once you've got your design positioned where you want it on the 3D printer is you need to now slice it. So you need to kind of uh, have the application take what you've got, where you've got it, and then figure out how the 3D printer is going to print it. And so that process is called slicing. So we're going to click this slice button here. And what that's going to do is it's going to do its work, figure out all of the instructions that it's going to need to give to the printer in order to print your design. It will typically also give you an estimate for how long it's going to take. In this particular case, I can see it's going to be about 42 minutes. It will also give you an estimate of how much of the plastic or material that you're printing with uh, will be required. So here I'm, I'm using a plastic, which most people use, and um, it's going to require 7 grams and 2.29 meters and that will kind of give you an indication of how much of your material you may be taking up all right now one of the great features of uh, most applications is a preview and the preview what it's going to show you is how things are going to print so in this particular case I've got a preview here and I can see kind of how things are going to print on the printer. One of the things you could typically do is just kind of go through all of the different layers that are going to be printed and then you can also sometimes get a feel for how the layer itself is going to be printed. So in this particular application I've got a slider on the right, I've got a slider on the bottom here and each of them will help me kind of navigate through how this is going to be printed. So if I move the slider up and down you can see I can get a little insight into each particular layer, what it's going to look like. And this slider down the bottom is also going to show me how the printer is going to print each layer. So on that particular layer, how is the printer going to print that layer? Okay, And that's really, really, really important. But I want to show you something in, um, about this particular um, print because this is something that beginning 3D modelers don't typically think about. See my design here? Um, as I move up with the layers, you see that it's kind of building these sides and building the amount inside or the, the, the fill or what we call infill. And as it gets up here, it's going to get closer and closer and closer to a spot where it needs to cover the hole. Right? So we got this hole in here, but then I've got something on top of it. But let me just zoom in here and show you what's happening here there's going to be one layer that's going to cover this entire hole. Now this layer um, is fairly small, it's pretty much less than one millimeter, but as the printer makes it, take a look at what's going to happen. It's going to move and it's going to try and draw um, or print a piece of plastic over this hole. Now let's think about this just for a moment. This is heated plastic that I'm using, In most cases it's plastic or has plastic in it, it's melted to about 200 degrees Celsius. Melted plastic. Think about it, as it draws a thin layer of melted plastic over that huge gap, what do you think is going to happen to that melted plastic? Well, it's going to cool pretty quickly, but still, if it's, if it's hot, it, you could probably imagine it's going to sag over that hole. And that's going to be a problem because as it prints that and then comes over here, it's going to print this whole layer over no support, just a little support on the edges. And I can envision this plastic just kind of bowing in the middle. That's going to be a problem because what's going to happen is then we're going to have another layer come after it that's going to be printed on that and another layer on that and another layer on that. And this middle part here I think is actually going to be bowed. So that's a problem. Now I may not think about that t while I'm designing until I realize that the printer is going to have problems with that. So the question is what do we do? Well we've got a couple options. 
And I want you to be thinking about these as you design because one option is easy and another option, eh, not so much. So let's talk about the first option, support. All right. The first option is support. I can instruct the application here to provide extra support for my shape. So let me just give you a little insight. Any application that you use is going to give you the ability to add support. And that's typically what we call support. So in my settings, I've got some very easy settings. Um, I can come in here and I can click generate support. And generally, uh, the application that you're using will be able to figure out where the support is needed automatically. It understands the mathematics behind your shape, so it can figure that out. Some applications actually allow you to go in there and manually provide support. We're not going to discuss that or go over that. But generally, when the application is automatically preparing the support, you basically just tell it what's the biggest angle that can be uh, printed without support, and then anything it finds over that angle it will provide support. So let's just say a, a, a general support angle is 45 degrees. Most printers will be okay printing at 45 degrees. So a 45 degree angle, it can compensate for that. It's not gonna hang too much because it will have a little bit underneath it to support it. Anything over 45 degrees now, we're gonna ask it to build support, all right? Now, so, since I changed that, I need to redo the preview because and um, it has to recalculate everything for the printer. So let's go ahead and slice this and see what it does. All right, so here is my 3D object again. And now you'll notice that there's stuff in the middle. So what's going on here? Well, the 3D printer recognized that this layer up here, this layer is way over 45 degrees. It's a 90 degree angle, right? It's 90 degrees, it's way over 45 degrees. So it's gonna need support there. So it's gonna print actually all of this stuff in the middle so that when we get to that top layer and we print that layer the filament that's printed in that layer, let me just tweak that there, it's going to have support underneath it to support that layer. Now that sounds really really cool and that sounds like a really great idea. The problem with that is, and you'll notice that I also have some support on the sides as well now too, this angle was deemed to be over 45 degrees, so it's also printing support on the sides as well. Again, that sounds really good, but if you think about it, now we've got all of this filament in the middle. Now the application will try and make that filament like the least dense it can and able to break away from your 3D print, uh, but sometimes it's not so easy to break that away. And in the effort of breaking some of the support away, you can damage your 3D design. So the support can come in handy if your print needs it or your object needs it, but we try to get away without supports as much as we possibly can. So what does that have to do with you, the 3D modeler? Well, as you're designing something, you should be aware of the angles that you're using to design your shape. Are you creating designs that have a huge overhang angle that are going to require a lot of support to print? And if they do, are you going to be wasting a lot of filament in order to provide that support? Could you redesign your object in such a way that that support is not needed? That's a really important thing to be thinking about. Anytime you're designing something, you really need to be thinking about how it's going to come out in the 3D printer. What kind of support is going to be necessary? We ultimately like to design things that don't need any support or have minimal support. And I will say, having 3D printed for many years, if, if I have to print with support, I don't love it uh, because it's messy, it requires more filament, it's harder to deal with. Um, if it's necessary, fine. Now there's different ways of handling all that, but in general, if we can print without supports, uh, that would be great. Now, does that mean that, that my design here was terrible? Well, um, maybe some of it needs to be redesigned. Maybe those points need to be in a little bit so that that angle is um, not so drastic so that it could print it without supports. I could try printing it without supports, but I might run the risk of having some problems. Uh, I could set my printer to say, or my slicer to say, hey, you know what, instead of 45 degrees, maybe let's risk it with 54 degrees. 
All right, and then we could re-slice that and see what we get there. 54 degrees really was still too much for this overhang, so uh, you could risk it. But um, maybe I should redesign this so that the overhang angle isn't so much. But there's actually something else you can do um, as you're preparing your object for printing that someone could help you with if you're not doing it yourself. So let's go over here to prepare. Now notice that this is going to be a problem here, but I can actually rotate this before I print it. So if I actually took this shape here and I rotate it this way, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, there's 90 degrees. If I rotate it, now look at where my hole is. My hole is from the bottom up, not from the side through. How does that change things? Well, notice now that the printer can actually print around the hole instead of having to print around it this way. It can print around it this way and just leave a hole in the middle. So if I slice that and take a look at the preview, we'll notice that we, though we still need the support on the sides because I have that point, notice now I don't need any support in the middle because there's nothing that's going to overhang that needs support. So sometimes you can 3D design a shape that doesn't need support in one orientation but might need support in another orientation. So that might be up to you or the person preparing it for the 3D printer to kind of uh, position it on the bed so that a minimal support is needed. So just in one orientation I needed to print this with three different areas of support on the left, the right, and the middle. But just by rotating it 90 degrees now I've eliminated that support in the middle and I just need support on the sides. So that could be something that I could utilize to um, overcome the need for some of that support. So a lot of things to be thinking about as you are 3D modeling. Don't just think about the creation of the 3D model in your application like Tinkercad. Be thinking about this middle step that's necessary. How am I going to take this design that I created in Tinkercad and get it to 3D print? Are there going to be problems? Are there going to be areas that the printer is going to have difficulty with printing? Am I going to need a lot of support? If I do need a lot of support, maybe I should rethink the design of that so that I can eliminate some of that. Or uh, would support be needed in one orientation, but I could simply rotate it in another orientation so that uh, not as much support is needed. Those are things that you should be thinking about as you 3D design. All right, hope that was good insight for you uh, as you prepare to 3D print your models. I'm assuming that someone is going to help you, but if you're doing that on your own, again, this is really great stuff to be thinking about. And I hope you enjoy 3D modeling and 3D printing, and I hope you use the least amount of filament possible.